I had the good fortune of knowing Stuart, when he, <laughs> he a sentiments expert, so I got asked last Wednesday to have a look at this with him. So he said, yes, I could. As he said, we've known each other quite a while. Um, and I, I did, in fact, do my master's degree in sediment mechanics at MIT. I've done a number of sediment studies. All I can tell you at this point is I've had a chance to look at the file and found that there are indeed 13 sediment studies that have been done. I've had a chance to look at them preliminarily and form some opinions as to whether there's sound science there. But I think I'll hold on passing any judgment on that and just see what questions the supervisors have. Thank you. And with that, uh, Supervisor Armstrong, would you start off the question? Well, I certainly would want to hear what uh, uh, Mr. Lampy has to say. Um, what are the potential long and short term risks of dam removal and sediment release to downstream infrastructure, private property, fish and invertebrates, wildlife and habitat, increased flooding? You know, what, what do we got here? You know? Well, you've got a, um, a complex system, and I wouldn't be prepared to answer all of those questions. Um, the, the dams themselves as hydraulic measures uh, are not terribly large features. They don't offer a lot of storage. So as to flooding events, I don't see, I mean, again, some people have done studies as to what they do, and I'm not willing to pass on, on that. Um, there are more expert folks than I on that particular topic, but by and large, they don't provide any um, large flood restrictions. So the protection they afford to infrastructure isn't large. The actual um, release of the sediments from the dams um, seems to be a, a subject of some controversy. There are several of these studies that go back and forth. Um, there's, there's essentially two groups of studies. One's done by Pacific Corps, uh, uh, primary study done by J.C. Headwaters as to how much sediment is there, what the characteristics of it are, and then um, additional studies done by the California uh, State Coastal Conservancy looking at the quality of sediment and the quantity of sediment further by taking some samples in the reservoir. Um, those studies by the Conservancy then propagated um, studies of how should the sediment be thought of to be released behind uh, the dams. And in, in um, summary, I think the thing to say is that they really only looked at one alternative, and that's a fairly rapid and sudden release of sediment from behind the dams. And it's not clear that that's an advisable approach. Uh, as an engineer um, licensed here in all the West Coast, um, the proper thing to do is a feasibility study of what are the ways one would do that if that's a, the, the approach in the dam removal scenario. But taking an even further step backward, there, nobody has actually done a feasibility study of the dams stay, the dams go, some of the dams stay. I mean, it seems to me on a decision that this large, that's just sort of an a priori criteria as you would look before you leave and look at the cost benefits of what these things are gonna do with sediments only being one component of the whole picture. Do they have a potential of, that you saw of, uh, um, of potentially hurting anything downstream? Um, well, uh, river sediment mechanics around dams is, is fairly um, simple and yet complex. Rivers um, and, and systems do either one of two things. They're either an aggregating system or a degrading system. Aggregating means it's, it's putting sediment in and depositing it actively in the area. Degrading means it's taking it away. Um, once you put a dam in, what you do is you artificially stockpile the sediment behind the dam, and so the river naturally degrades the area below it. So these rivers, that I saw evidence today as we drove through on a beautiful day to see the river valley, and I should add, this isn't the first project I've ever done in Klamath, and the first time I've ever uh, become aware. I've done studies for the project area as to how much water is available and where. Um, but in short, the, uh, the lower river below Iron Gate has degraded its riverbed by several feet, and that would simply be refilled once uh, a dam was to come out and the sediment was released. That would raise the base elevation of the river closer to its natural floodplain. Uh, it has a fairly broad floodplain down by I-5, but most of the way it's relatively narrowly constrained by the, uh, the bedrock that surrounds it in the area of the dams. 
So, I mean, I don't want to go on too long, but it's, it's, it's a complex uh, system. It will re-equilibrate um, once you take out the dams. I think the real issue I had with the dam studies done is that they really only looked at one way in which you can um, take the reservoirs down and begin to allow the sediment to release. The normal course of action in one of these is to allow the river to reacquire that sediment and, and take it downstream. Um, and it will dynamically re-equilibrate in, in the system. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Cook. Then, then um, to reduce some of the risk to as the bed would rise, would it make sense to remove that sediment and, and stockpile it someplace else? Uh, you would also then stop it from paving, as it were, using the fines to, uh, it might uh, destroy the invertebrates in the river. <coughs> would it make sense to, to remove that sediment, or at least part of that sediment? Um, no, I, I have to liken that, Dave. I, I, I did coastal studies when I was doing my sediment mechanics of longshore flow. And in, in short, it's sort of like moving grains of sand on the beach. It's going to do what it's going to do. You may as well work with those forces than, than having dump trucks, which are you know, rather small compared to this river. Uh, 